Shut up and just create podcasts. Powered by CBA Studios in downtown Birmingham, Alabama. Shut up! This is They Gotta Shine. <laughs> what they gotta shine. Shut up and just create podcasts. And I have Miss Elizabeth Linnell, born and raised in California. And uh, your script supervisor, correct? I am. Um, I'm a script supervisor uh, responsible for continuity. That's the easiest way <laughs> to explain, you know, to what people uh, think I do. I'm responsible for uh, what the camera sees and slates and writing it all down and the sound and all of my notes go to the editor. So I'm I'm, I like to refer to myself as the bridge between the director and the editor. So you know all the screen direction, you know, you're just recording everything from what the camera shoots from um, action to cut. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, so that they know what the continuity is, um, let's give them a little bit more uh, of a modern eye of what that looks like when it comes to film. Okay, so we never shoot anything in order. So whether it's a TV series or a film, um, so you arrive on set, um, even before we start, I do what's called a breakdown. So we do a breakdown of the characters and the location. So let's say we have, we're shooting a scene, we're gonna be at the hospital. But there might be like five scenes in the film that's at a hospital. So you wanna put all of those together and everything like that. So a lot of people, their first thing is to go, I saw this mistake and I saw this and you know, all of that. So if we shoot, let's say, let's say Tuesday, we're on a set and you have a purse and your purse is on your right shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. And you're walking through the halls and then we're not going to finish that scene. So we're going to pick that up maybe in a week. So I'm looking through my continuity photos and all of that. And the actor, or actor actress might say, you know, did, was I carrying my purse on the right or the left? I can go back through and look Ooh. and see, okay, it was the right shoulder. So to make sure that you have, or you lifted your glass with your right hand, or, you know, maybe your hair was on like on this side and then we cut. And then we go for a close up and now your hair is over here. You know, I can say, you know, to the, the hair, um, hair person, you know, can you make sure that her ponytail's on this side? So it's just making sure that when you're watching it, it's in a fluid, you know, kind of way of doing things. And it doesn't look all like, oh my gosh, she had on a blue shirt. Now she's on <laughs> You know, where was the necklace and how come, you know, it's like all that, all those kind of things just kind of flow. So it's my responsibility to, um, to look after those, all of those things, everything, the lighting, the, you know, from the camera to the makeup, just to make sure everything matches Ooh. what we previously shot. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. No pressure. Love it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No, you know, it, it, takes, it, it takes a team, you know, it takes right. a, a team of everyone in their department working together collaboratively to get it all done because everybody has the same goal. You want to make it look good. Mm -hmm. You know, the actors, they want to they wanna get out there and do their thing, you know, so if they miss a line, I'm giving them that, uh, the line, or if they say, mm -hmm. you know, they're in the middle of saying, you know, the the bird was in the tree, oh, line, I got to give that line. So it's all, you know, it's a lot. It's paying attention to detail. A lot of detail. <laughs> so you definitely can't sleep on the job. <laughs> you listen. <laughs> I don't care how boring the scene is, how slow it might be going. I cannot be like, you know, <laughs> you, you got to, I got to pay attention. You got to, you got to focus Man. and look at things. And even from screen direction. So if an actor is entering, you know, on one side of the camera, you know, when we turn it around, mm. got to make sure that that, that matches so they won't be on the other side of the mm. camera when it goes to editing. There's so much, but again, I love it. <laughs> That's funny because um, 
as as an audience watching a show um because no one really um i guess how can i put it script supervisor is not a word or position that you hear uh for those that are not in film so it's funny because most times when someone is watching something and there's a mess up they automatically think it's the editor aspect of yeah. it so really uh especially those that are filmmakers you really need to be making sure you bring somebody on set that can be a <laughs> script supervisor because you do, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you do. And I'll, you know, I'll say this. I'll say that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no but, problem. You know, sometimes we will do, depending on the director and time, money, the, you know, all of that, um, you can do multiple takes. Some directors want to do their one take wonders. Okay, we got it. Good. Let's go. Others mm. are like, we're going to perfect this thing. So you may have six takes, you know, or maybe something happened. You got an airplane in the scene, you know. Mm realize that a prop was missing or you know the actors just giggled through it or you know <laughs> anything can happen that you gotta re restart right all right so you may have six takes and the third take i'll circle for the director or the director's like i like mm. that one circle that mm. but then when it goes to editing the editing the editor may say you know this was the best take but it's not the best take for sound Mm. but so they may go with take two which was the best take for sound but mm. they were missing something or you know so uh, we don't always know, <laughs> <laughs> we don't always know. That's, it could be me you know it could it could definitely be something that we missed it could be a, you know all kinds of things it could be you know the the project we worked on was a six month shoot Mm. And it's very difficult to like, okay, do we have notes? Yeah, we have the notes, but let's go back. Or maybe it was a reshoot Ooh. of something. So it's all kinds of wow. pick up some things and all that stuff. You know? And it's so funny because we just have to focus on all of that. <laughs> I was gonna say it's funny because anything the way I look at it is when it comes to filmmaking especially on an independent side and, and of course it depends on budget crew and things of that nature but you're in television so your responsibility is a heck of a lot <laughs> larger than hey we got a three three man crew or one band man type of thing so i can only imagine <laughs> how many notes and and picture you running around with these things in your hand that would drive me nuts well again you know it's it's collaborative so you know i'm not looking at everything for the wardrobe because we have a wardrobe team and they take continuity pictures and we have you know hair and makeup they take continuity pictures and the props they take everybody has their own thing and sometimes you know we'll look at each other's like okay we need to go back to this do you have pictures from here because i only have pictures of this side of the room mm -hmm. and now we can get pictures of this side of the room or you know in this scene was her sleeves rolled up or was it down or was mm -hmm. it you know and then there's a it's kind of a language it's a system so mm -hmm. you know i can't just show up all willy-nilly trying to like well what is it you know and then all of that, but over the years, I've learned how to, what works best for me. Okay. So the job, the job is the same for any script supervisor, but how you do it, how you go about it, mm. your workflow, do you work well under stress? Do you not work well under stress? <laughs> you know, how, can you work well with people? You know, you <laughs> with people and everybody has a different temperament. You know, mm. most people would say I'm pretty calm. I'm just kind of calm in, in general. Mm -hmm. But there's days where you're just like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're just like, okay, you know. So it's just it's just what it is, you know. Or it's high high stress or high. Um, 
uh, the timing is very, very quick. You know, it's like, okay, mm. we got six hours to get this shot or we have an hour because we're losing the sun. We're outside and we got to get this, you know, done. Are right. we going to be able to make it? Are we going to cut it? Are we going to be able to, will it match? You know, mm. if we had a phone call and somebody was, you know, talking at midnight on the phone and now we're going to go and talk to some, you know, do another <laughs> scene. They're talking to that person in the same town you know, it can't uh, be, you know, looking like it's 3 p.m. Right, <laughs> you know? right. So, <laughs> there's just a lot of, but you're, my mind is like a hamster wheel. So, it's like, mm. it's just going, it's just going, it's just going. So, yeah. <laughs> Man. Oh, if they say I, I, I wouldn't want your problems. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wouldn't want it's your fine. problems. It's fine. It's no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> so how did you uh, become a script supervisor? Yes. Yeah, so my story is a little unique. We were, um, I did sound, work the soundboards for a theater company that I was a part of. And we were at a banquet and uh, everybody's just kind of walking around, kind of mingling, small talk. People hadn't really, you know, everybody hadn't arrived and people were just talking. And I started talking with the gentleman and he was asking me about my kids. And I was like, you know, uh, you're a child or kid or whatever. And he was like, I only have one son. And I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> I didn't know, you know, I'm just kind of chatting. And uh, he he asked me what I was doing and I said, Oh, I'm a PA um, on a show. And I just finished the year because I was um, uh, working with special ed children at a, uh, in the public school system. So I said, well, I'm working on a show being a PA. And he was like a PA. He's like, you're too old to be a PA. And okay. I was like, wow. I said, no. <laughs> nobody ever has ever told me I was too old for anything <laughs> so like wow okay and he was like no you know I mean you know you're just you're just too old to be a PA have you ever thought about script supervision and I said no and he was like you know I think you'd be really good at it I think you'd be really good and I was like okay and he was like you know why don't you do this why don't you I'm gonna give you my information shoot me an email tomorrow morning go home, look it up and see if it's something you want to do. And I was like, uh, okay. So, you know, I walked away, banquet, you know, went on and hanging out with my friends or whatever. Before I left the banquet, people were congratulating me on my new job. And I was like, what new job? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I was clearly in the dark about what they were, you know, referring to. Right. But this guy, this director, he was telling people, oh, I got a new script. I gave her a new job and I da 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 da. And so <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> so I went home and I just got on the internet and I just, you know, put script supervisor and just kind of put in, you know, what, what was the job? And I was like, okay. And on the show that I worked on, I only knew one person. Okay. And so I went back to work. I was on a show, a network show, and um, that Monday, I'm sorry, the, the, the banquet was a Sunday night. That Monday, I emailed him, and I was like, sure, you know, because what I read on the internet, it was like, you know, fine. And, you know, my friend Scott, I was like, I saw, I, I heard what he did. I didn't really know. I knew he sat in front of a computer, and he gave dialect to the actors. So I'm like, I can do that. Yeah. So I told him, yes, you know, I emailed him. Yes. And well, thank you. And he was like, great. We start shooting next Tuesday. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, so I'm on set and I'm walking around and I'm like, Hey, has anybody seen Scott? And they're like, Oh, he's not here. He's in Louisiana shooting a film for Owen Wilson. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, He was my go-to. So what am I going to do? How am I going to, you know, how am I going to learn? And so I was outside by the wardrobe um, trailers and I saw this lady posted up on the wall smoking. I didn't know her. I'd never seen her before on set. So I just walked up to her and I was like, hi, my name's Elizabeth. And um, are you our new script supervisor? And she said, yes. And so I said, <laughs> great. <laughs> I just got hired today. 
do what you do, will you help me? <laughs> and she was like, I'd love to. Oh my gosh. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm writing a book about script supervision and I would love to help you. And I was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is, this is landing right in my life, you know? And so, um, of course, I had a job to do every day on set. We were working 12-hour days. And uh, I was like, I don't know when I'm going to have time to figure out, you know, should, what should I do? And I couldn't go and shadow her because I had another, right. my own job to do, you know? And so she gave me her her name, I mean, her number and, you know, address and all of that. And that Saturday I went to her house and she lives about an hour and a half from me. And we did like a five hour crash course mm. in script supervision. Her name is Danielle Snowden. She's awesome. She's an amazing woman. Um, my mentor and one of my uh, um, dearest friends. And um, that Tuesday I started my first uh, Lifetime movie. Now, in between then, I did go to like, I think Borders, Barnes and Noble was the bookstore. I was online watching little YouTube, what <laughs> I could find because there was just little pieces, you know? Mm -hmm. you, you know, there wasn't a whole lot about the job. And I was like, well, how do I do this? And Danielle gave me her forms and was like, this is how you do it. And at that point I was all pencil and paper. Pencil and paper, I had a little, my little stopwatch, and I had a little uh, Nikon camera to do all <laughs> my screens. And I didn't know anything. I was just like, you show up on set, and I was told, fake it till you make it. <laughs> you <know? laughs> there was a lot of set lingo. I had no idea what they, I mean, you know, I've been around set, so I knew some, but I didn't right. know, like, you know, when people would ask me questions, I was like, you know, I just gave the best answers I could. <laughs> and so um, I worked. I mean, that I landed on set and, and did, I think, eight films with this particular uh, director. Oh. And I've been working ever since. I've never um, stopped working. So it's been a blessing. Oh, wow. So I tell people all the time, God gave me my job. <laughs> is 100% responsible because I had no idea, you know, what I really wanted to do. I didn't know. It's not like I went to school, graduated, and was like, I'm going to become a script supervisor. And I, can't wait. <laughs> you know, that's not, that's not what it was. And I had to work hard and I had to learn and I had to study and, and, you know, figure it out. And I would be, you know, um, <laughs> I remember texting Danielle, like in the middle of the scene, they just did this director, just asked this, you know, what do I do? And how do I, <laughs> and eventually, um, you know, Scotty came back and then he was like, Oh my gosh, Elizabeth, I'm so proud of you. So I was able to ask him. <laughs> and then, um, I went online and I found a class called the art of continuity. And it's taught by another one of my friends and mentors, uh, Don Gilliam, and she is, mm. listen, she is the best in the business. She mm. is what I'm like. She's the Michael Jackson to me <laughs> of the industry in, in our, you know, in our field. You know, right. not, uh, we were talking earlier this year and we were just like, you know, there's not a lot of African-American mm. uh, female script supervisors. Mm. And it, we just kind of, just kind of, talking about, you know, how can we change that or what can we do? And her first movie was Boys in the Hood. Wow. And uh, I think the last one she did, she, she's J.J. Abrams' script supervisor, and she's done all of, she did Black Panther, Creed, oh, wow. um, the Star Wars film. Like, okay, so she is the Michael intense. Jackson. <laughs> so I said, you know, if I don't learn from her, you know, I'm doing <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing myself a disservice, you know, right. you want to learn from the best and, uh, you know, watching the videos. I haven't completed everything, but it's an ongoing like class. And so nice. once you're in, it's lifelong and you can, you know, type questions and learn and all of that. And so it's like, let me do that. And I didn't even, I was like, I don't even know how I'm going to get the money to take her class. And I was talking about it on another set 
And a producer of that set was like, I'm going to invest in you. And he paid for my classes. Are you serious? (laughs) (laughs) So again, so it was like, okay, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. And he was like, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to go to this banquet. You're going to talk to this person. He's going to insult you and tell you you're too old, but then he's going to give you a job and then you're going to work with him and then you're going to network and then you're going to give me all the glory. (laughs) And that's, that's my life. (laughs) So you were just so happy talking about this and the producer said, Oh, I'm going to invest in you. I'm yeah. going to pay for you I to take sitting, these classes. It, yeah, I, it was, I was talking to him about it, and I was like, I'm going to do it, you know? And he was like, oh, okay, you know? And at lunchtime, it was like maybe five hours later, I was sitting in my car having lunch because it was like 30 degrees outside, mm. and we were shooting in this junkyard. Mm. And he, like, kind of, you know, tapped on my window, and I turned, and rolled the window down and he handed me a check and he was like, these are for your classes. I mean, I cried like a baby. I was like, hold on. So <laughs> this, <laughs> this producer mm-hmm. went looking for you to give you money. Yes. In 30 degree weather. 30 degree weather. We were shooting in a city out here called Lancaster and it was ice cold. I mean, it was cold. (laughs) It gets cold in California. It was cold. And he knocked on my window. I was sitting in my car having lunch, minding my own business, just trying to stay warm. (laughs) And that's what he did. Okay. So I want to pause and let (laughs) everyone know that this is not, Usually, the way <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it, it don't usually happen <laughs> in this manner. So I just want y'all to know. <laughs> don't yeah. expect things to just flow in very unique in your lap. It don't really work like this. These steps was just already ordered no, it for for her. <laughs> the favor yeah. had already rained. But because yeah, it's like, and I'm, it's funny because I'm sitting here speechless. I can't even move to the next question because I'm like, what? Because you just don't, <laughs> you don't hear that. Like, wow, and and that's how you know when something is for you, something is for you. When God is with you, He's with you. Because I'm like, hold on, I'm thinking at least that this particular producer mm-hmm. said, okay, I'm gonna give you. Uh, I'm gonna pay for it, and you guys are still maybe together around there. And he decides to go ahead and give it to you, but to actually yeah. find somebody that goes looking for you <laughs> to hand you checks for a no. class, yeah, in 30 degree weather. I don't think I would have went looking to go give somebody coffee in 30 degree weather. I would have been trying to be warm <laughs> myself. <laughs> yeah. So that is awesome. That is awesome. So how did you uh, stumble across the classes? So the classes I saw when I was looking just to read upon try what does a script supervisor all do and um i saw a youtube video that don had created it was like a three or four minute video and then mm-hmm. when i looked into that i was like okay i don't have time to do this like i'm i got like four days before i start you know this <laughs> job that i'm like i kind of got an idea but i really don't know and i'm a little wow. you know overwhelmed i mean i was stressed out to the point where I couldn't eat. I was like, I'm so nervous. I'm shaking. I think I drove on set like, oh my God. (laughs) But um, that's how I found the classes. I just looked online, um, put in script supervision, and I was on YouTube just trying to watch videos and taking pictures of any little blurb that I saw (laughs) that mentioned what script supervision does. And and seeing different people's notes. I'm like, okay, now that I know what I do, I need to see people's notes. I need to see <laughs> what is it like, you know, like I need work. And so, you know, with every 
every job that I had, you know, you get better and better. Right. And so you work like, okay, I know not to do that. Now I can do this. I can't, I don't know how I made it through this, but I can do it that way, you know, and I, that's just, you know, how, how I, how I did it. Nice. How did you guys end up becoming friends? Was it through the class or what have you guys worked together? I have never worked with Dawn, not yet. Um, do like maybe a second unit with her would be the only way that I think that we would work together or she would be directing and then hire me gotcha. <laughs> to be her script. Supervisor. But I'll never forget the very first time I spoke with her, I was um, visiting in San Diego. I was coming home from church and uh, she called me and I was like, what? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> why is she calling little old me what is this about and I was so nervous and she was just like you know I just wanted to check on you and see how you're doing and how do you love the job and what are you working on and I just nice. want you to be the best and you know get back into the class and take the classes and because it was it's literally she has it's 12 classes and okay. through the 12 classes, it's about 200 hours of video, like of her speaking and watching. And so what she offers even, even with that is I can send her my notes and then she corrected them. And let me tell you, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to be corrected because, you know, what's going to come from that is growth. I'm going to mm. be better, right? Mm -hmm. But when you know that you've learned something maybe in an incorrect way, it's like, okay, I got to unlearn this bad habit mm. or maybe I didn't learn it that way, but I started doing it that way because it worked for me, mm. but it's not necessarily the best way to go about doing something. But I'm like, she's not where she is because she <laughs> took shortcuts. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, she's not where she is because she was lazy or nice. you know all of that so i'm like okay let me let me pull this from her because i really like that and i'm going to pull this from this person because i like their style and then i'm going to kind of parlay it into how i need to be and what works for me and then every director is different some directors are literally sitting i sit in what we call video village and watch the monitor and then i have mm -hmm. my computer and then i have um uh, work to you know to pull the monitor into my into my camera and so i can see all of that but a lot of directors now they have their own their own monitor and they're on right on set and so we have to mm -hmm. communicate that way and sometimes some directors are sitting right next to you the entire time and we can just kind of you know kind mm -hmm. of talk so there's a language you have to learn the temperature of each set it's going to be different so sometimes I'm like, I'm running around because I got to go and no, we can't move on. This is what I saw in the door, you know, or this is what I, so I'm kind of, you know, blown, but you just get into a flow. You get into a flow of what that particular set requires. So <laughs> nice. and you adjust, you adjust to that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's speak of being on set. What's one of the, uh, What's one of your favorite things about being on set? Ooh, my favorite things about being on set. I love, I love the energy. So most people in general, they're just so happy to be in this atmosphere. It's, I, I mean, I count it a joy and a blessing. And I think most people do too. And so I like working with other creative minds and seeing their vision and seeing everything off the paper from the script that I've been reading for however long, the last two weeks or the last month, or, you know, sometimes I got the script the day before, or two mm. days before, you know, you just, but I like, I like seeing what's coming off on paper being coming into fruition in front of us. Like, Oh, wow. Okay. I envisioned it this way and this is how it's looking or wow, this is just what I thought it would be like, you know? So <laughs> I love that. I, I love that. I love the art of filmmaking. 
Nice. So tell us, uh, what are, I guess, your favorite projects that you've had the opportunity to work on so far? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so my favorite, okay, right now I'm working with a production company. It's Tridestin Productions, and we uh, are doing a series called The Family Business. We, When the quarantine happened, we were still in production for The Family Business Season 2. Uh-huh. And that has been, we completed um, six episodes, and we still have six more to complete. So we're not done yet. But um, I've worked with them for the last several years, and I love everything that we've done. We've done The Family Business, which was, when we started, was going to be a film. And um, I think with Trey Haley and um, Carl Weber, which the family business comes from Carl Weber's best-selling novel, The Family Business. And so we we worked with um, the family business and then they, BET picked it up. And so we kind of went back and did everything as a series. And so we were blessed to have season two and that's what we were working on before the quarantine. So I've done the family business, working on the family business too. Uh, we did a beautiful movie last year called Always a Bridesmaid, which is also streaming on Netflix. That is actually um, one of my actually- faves. <laughs> is it? Oh. It, is, it is definitely one of my faves. Yeah. And I've, I've watched well, it so many times. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That was written by Yvette Nicole Brown. And um, if you don't know who she is, you need to know who she is. She's a powerhouse. You need to follow her. You need to, I mean, she's extraordinary. Extraordinary. Nice. And, this, and I respect her so much. She just adds so much value to the art of filmmaking, to just being a friendship and just being a real down-to-earth person. I've learned a lot from her. Wow. So... Yeah, so that that's also one of my favorite um, favorite uh, movies projects I've worked on. Always a bride. Shut up! Hey, this is Ayana Shine with the Shut Up and Just Create Shut Up and Just Create podcast.